This is the Audio Visual Podcast. Take a journey with your host, Kyle Dean. Explore captivating stories, insights, and experiences from diverse professionals that ignite your own creative spark. Welcome to a world beyond audiovisual. Welcome to the Audio Visual Podcast. Welcome to the Audio Visual Podcast. Kyle Dean here with you. We're back at it once again. And uh, joining me here is meteorologist Tom Schrader. Tom, how are you doing today? I am doing great. I, you know what? The rain's kind of nice. You know, we're, re- we're recording this on a rainy day. Yes. Yeah. So I'm actually doing great. The good. And, you know, I do need the rain because trying to get that uh, yard out there seeded and uh, rooted is what I need so well, it doesn't wash out. And I want to say something right off the bat because I <laughs> have a studio in Rochester, Minnesota, mm-hmm. and one here in Minot. Uh, and you, your, my studios, if you put both of them together, isn't as nice as this one. <laughs> Count me officially jealous. This is a great setup you have. Yeah, it's still a work in progress. And uh, my wow. wife my wife is probably shaking her head. Very, no, but very patient with yes, you. Very, yeah. <laughs> she is. She is. But this is something that I really wanted to do was really get kind of my own studio. Yeah, it has a little bit of everything, but... Um, just trying to figure out all the kinks now is the fun part. That That's what it is. Well, Tom, uh, first off, I, I, I know um, we I talked to Amber Wheeler a little bit, and she recommended you for an interview, so I'm very excited to do this and really dive in about your side of meteorology now. But the one thing that I do, that I do with every show is do rapid-fire questions. So I, I hope you're ready for some rapid-fire questions. I'm ready for nine questions. out of ten of them. Nine out of uh, ten. Yeah, okay. yeah, usually just ten questions. <laughs> So nothing yeah. too crazy. Okay. All right, here we go. Rapid fire question. Number one, what's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. If you had to eat one meal every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Gumbo. Gumbo. Okay, that's an interesting one. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, all-time favorite is probably Armageddon. Armageddon? Probably. Okay. Yeah. And uh, TV show, a couple of them that I just watched with my son when he was younger, mm-hmm. uh, Burn Notice or Psych. Okay, yeah, I've watched both of those. Not th- not all the way through. Have you seen every episode? Every there? episode, more than <laughs> once. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what is your go-to karaoke song, or what is just your favorite song? Oh my! You know this is weird because for my entire radio career, I was a rock disc jockey. Yep. And uh, I've never listened to country music. Never <laughs> liked country music. Yep. And uh, on the day after I retired, I turned on a YouTube video, and I saw Blake Shelton on there. Okay. Now. I've never watched The Voice, America's Got Talent, or any of those shows. I'm not... I, that's just not me. Mm-hmm. I do watch like the videos for the golden tickets and things like that because it's pretty cool. Yep. But all of a sudden, I watched this Blake Shelton video and it was uh, uh, Nobody. Okay. His, I think it's, I don't know if it's his latest, but it's really close to his latest yep. song. And it's like... Wow, I like Blake Sheldon, and then now I'm. That's I've got a playlist. Joe Goldaddy has a has, has a uh, has a, a site where he's a music site, and I've downloaded about every Blake Sheldon thing. So I went from rock and roll to Blake Sheldon, and then Luke Bryan and Trey Atkins, and that's kind of as far as I've gotten. I'm really uh, starting to dig the t- uh, Tiger Lily Gold. Oh yeah, they are so talented. I mean, I've always followed them, yes. but I've started really listening to their music now, and yep. they're really good. Yeah, from Hazen, and I've been trying to get. Them on the podcast here, but now they have like managers you have to go through and all that. Did you see they're going to be on the Today Show yes. or Hoda or whatever? Yep, yep. Today yeah. Show. So yeah, I tried to reach out to them and they said, "Here's our manager information." I'm like, "Oh, they're big time yeah, now." They so are. they did the uh, Star Spangled Banner, the the <laughs> anthem at the Packers yes, game. Yes, yes, and uh, and nailed it. Can you imagine being like 25 and singing in front of 80,000 people? No. And they don't know that it's not on TV, probably, yes. at that point. You know, I I need to change underwear when it was over. I know, right? Like, like when it's <laughs> silent and then all of a sudden everybody roars. So, yeah, wow. so awesome. Well, that's that's uh, that's pretty good going from rock to country. Now. Well, I still like rock. I still like okay. rock. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm starting to really get into some country music. Now. Good, good. So what is your favorite game? It could be board game, video game, anything of the sort. Uh, probably racquetball okay. type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm 
just got paddle, a paddle ball set. Okay. So I'm going to get into that. Nice. So, yeah. Wow. I'm not, I don't think I've, I've tried racquetball at the college, but not paddle ball. So cool. What is your most used emoji? I mean, you got to be texting with everybody, all the meteorologists and stuff. Like I'm going to guess a thumbs up or a heart. Okay. And I, and I'm not hundred percent sure I'm using the heart correctly all the time. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, that those are probably the top two. Okay. Uh, if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which ones would you keep? Well, I would keep an uh, audio recorder okay. because I do some radio stuff mm-hmm. for uh, Jay Davis and on his radio stations. Yep. And I'm going to give it a quick plug here. 94.9 The Zoo, yep. 102.9 WGO, and Sunny 101.9. I do a, a forecast at 9 o'clock every day, so I need that. Um you know, I could get rid of Facebook. Yep. Yeah, I mean, even though I'm kind of really involved with it now, Correct. I could get rid of a lot. But this is the one that I didn't have a good answer for. Okay. I knew that I saw the questions ahead of time. This is the one. I, so I could get rid of most everything. I could unplug okay. pretty easily. So a recorder and possibly would you keep a weather app? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yes, absolutely. Yeah. A, a radar yeah. app. Yeah. That's and, what I figured. And then uh, something to look at forecast models. There you go. There. There's your three. Would you rather sleep in late or take a long nap at midday? Both. Both. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to complain about that one. Um, what would your superpower be and why? I, you know, I wasn't sure how to answer. Well, give me an example of a superpower you're talking uh, about. Maybe well, I'm just going to use, since you're a meteorologist, great weather like, like X-Men, Storm, or flying, or laser eyes, or something like that. You know, it's weird. I don't know if it's a superpower, but, and this is going to sound strange, I have really good vision yep, from works. about 18 inches out. I had cataract surgery because okay. I'm, I'm an old fart, right? So I had cataract surgery and the, they, they try to get you down to 2020 or 2030. Yep. And somehow it worked, it worked out to like 2010 okay. to 2015. I mean, when I go to the eye shop, I can read the bottom line. Wow. And one of the places at Trinity Eye Care, I, they took me to a different office that had more letters and I could read a couple of those. Okay. Now, I need reading glasses for anything close. I've got them laying all over the house. So I got, I have pretty good vision, but other than that. Yeah, my, my vision's like right here that you need to see. Well, okay, I'll take that. Good vision. And then last but not least, who is your hero? I have two of them, and okay. believe it or not, and this isn't, I'm not trying to blow smoke or anything. Um, Amber yep. Wheeler and Joe Goldaddy. All right. And that's honest to God truth. And we'll probably dive in a little bit about yeah. Joe Goldaddy here because I know m- most of my podcast listeners know who Amber Wheeler is. Went down to New Orleans. Right. I've heard she's having a good time too. I'm down going there. down there next month. You are. Yeah. I hope you're saying hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was your quick rapid fire questions right. with meteorologist Tom Schrader. And um, yeah, a lot of good answers right there. No doubt about that. I knew there was always one or two that are tricky for the for the guests. But you you rolled with them pretty good. I, I probably should add one more uh, okay. hero. And and again, this is I wouldn't have been able to retire without my wife. Okay. She's an accountant. Yeah. And over the years, I had no idea what what happened to my paycheck because yeah. I don't pay attention. <laughs> and, and that's not really a good thing. You should yes. know. You yes. know, I'm one of those people that don't have any idea where the money goes. But <laughs> over the years, she was investing and putting it away. Yep. So now I was able to retire because without her, I'd still be working. Yeah. So that's a superhero right there. Hey, well, I'm glad you're here today. Okay. Um, I, I've, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you're most of the reason I would say that I got into broadcasting at the wow. time. So I, I'm going to show you a quick video, which I'll pop up on the screen for our listeners and okay. everything here like that. But this is something that I want to throw you back to 1999. And okay. this, this is going to be good. And I'll, okay. so I'm going to throw it up oh, here. Michelle Melby. Yep, yep. I think she's in Green Bay. At least she was. Yeah, I'll see, I, don't, I, I, I remember her, but I, I don't know how long she was here. I think she's a real big deal in Green Bay. Is she in Green Bay now? Yeah, I oh. think so. And there's so many, it's so crazy how many people you see start in like Minot in small market and then go well Lauren Shahadi yep. has a you know she's on the MLB network yes, every and, day yeah and I think is that Florida now she's out of I no think. she's in New York oh, I mean she's, she, in New York. she's at the top of the game geez she, I mean she's like ESPN level for uh MLB for Major oh my League goodness yeah. wow wow yeah. Yeah. all right so let's get going here um if you want to do commentary okay. I don't know if we'll go through the full five minutes or just okay. skip through but here we go let me turn it well, up right for you. now, let's go ahead and take a look at the almanac numbers today in Mana. High temperature of 30 degrees. The low is I'm just, just going to let it play. Oh, that's fine. Yep. Look at those graphics. On the in Mana. <laughs> right yeah. now in Wilson, high temperature and, you know, that was pretty today. Advanced at that point. I, that's what I thought. 
seven inches you guys were cutting edge on well that i don't know what month this was and this being thursday night it is weather kid night <laughs> oh and yes you to kyle patterson and kyle how you doing Bob? <laughs> wow <laughs> look at that nerd <laughs> you were a cute kid what happened right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i wonder okay. that too now you're a second grader yeah. where do you go to school <laughs> and i had a little bit and of hair and i want to tell everybody you know the things you like to do i like art I'll, and math. My and voice. Recess. You know, most second graders <laughs> like recess, don't they? Yep. And is there anybody you want to say hi to? The you know what? Class, I Scott actually remember, and I didn't and remember it was you. I brother, do remember, Duffy. I to you this day, I can remember pretty, saying pretty, uh, most second graders like doing recess. Doing That's just now, one of those lines, <laughs> and it was you. I do remember saying that. I don't remember the other stuff, you know, some of the other things. But I do remember that. You want to try the lipstick? No. Yeah, you tried to get makeup on. I remember that. I do remember this. Cloudy, 29 degrees. <laughs> South, southeast wind, seven miles per hour. And we might have some fur, flurries or a little fog. Yep. And uh, the temperature in minor I, right now. I remember when you gave me the VHS um, tape too, and I converted it to digital and put it on YouTube just because chill, it's digital now. Yeah. So, yeah. but you can tell the graininess and all that. How about in Williston? And you were what grade? Second. And look how tall you are. Because I'm six foot. Oh, <laughs> that's second grade. So my boy's almost second grade 15? now too. Yeah. So I'm curious if she, boy, if he, if he has a, a growth spurt coming. Now you put these in most of these into the computer. So it must have been February or something. And See, back then, 18, we had to hand type all these in. Yeah, I remember that. pretty well automated. Yeah, I remember doing that. Like, it's just crazy. Like, the graphics look great, actually, for 99. My Air Force Base is 27. Grand Forks is 26. And Bismarck is 32. Not bad at all. This is great. I love this. My Air Force Base is 15. These are the lows last night. I should tell people that, huh? Grand Forks is six, <laughs> and Wilson is eight. It was eight degrees overnight last night. Okay, on the Dakota Doppler radar, tell me what you... I mean, you're yeah, a weather radar. kid. You know these Love things. This. Tell me yep. what you see. What's going on up there? Um, Cloudy in North Dakota. Thunderstorms way over there. Yeah, a few thunderstorms. <laughs> <laughs> over there. I don't know where there is. That works. I probably well. said that. <laughs> and uh, some rain down there. Yep. Now, I mean, you're I'm, pointing, I'm so why not? i quiz, because you did really good here, Okay. A little pop quiz. What's this? Good weather, bad weather? Good weather. What's going on over here? Stormy. Stormy. Good weather over there. And what's this green stuff? Rain. I got to tell you, now, <laughs> you, you know, what kind of grades you get? Um, straight A's. That's straight right. A's. Now, I, now, I got to tell you, I, <laughs> you get, I got a straight life. A report card once, but I had to give it back because it wasn't mine. <laughs> nice job. All right. We got Look a lot of you stuff telling jokes. Nice job. Why don't you go have a seat? Okay. And let me finish up. Wasn't he great? Second grade. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Clouds you know, that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. And then the like and all, you always did this at the end of the weather kit stuff. Not a big chance, but a chance. Now, yeah. the storm that Kyle pointed out that was over So once in it goes Utah to the Colorado, end, you always handed the, the plaque storm, and the United Community oh, Bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. snow in the uh, central U.S., some heavy rain so, down the So, yeah, once it pops up here and I... We might have a few flurries. You see, it's painted right there. Here we go. And awesome. He did great. You did much better than great. I think you did an excellent job. Fantastic. I still so, have that shirt. Uh, you get, uh, let me see. We have the KXMC Weather Kids t-shirt. This is yours. Yeah. All right. You also get, here's some good stuff, from United Community Bank in North Dakota. Uh, are you ready for college yet? Nope. Not quite? Well, when you are, this is an easy start education IRA from United Community Bank worth $50. That's a lot back then, <laughs> man. Yeah, back then it was. That good stuff. And also, because when you got here, we So I still have that. It's and, at my uh, home. We're going to put it on this plaque. It says KXMC Weather Kid. This is yours as well. As soon as we get the, uh, I have the one of them hanging in my studio. Of my daughter's. So Kyle, oh really? Yeah. Was that fun? Did you have a good time? Yep. Because you did a really, really nice job, and I am thoroughly impressed. And it looks like you're going to fall <laughs> into the crack right here. Watch. <laughs> because the stage is built in like right. pieces. You, want, you sure you don't want lipstick? Nope. Just, just <laughs> kidding, buddy. All right, stay with me. Oh, I remember. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just had to show you that because I remember the day when we did that. It was Thursday nights. I remember. And we did all the weather stuff. I don't know what time we came in. Was it two or three o'clock or something? It or was four? early. It was like after school. I, yeah, it was, it was like four because we didn't have a five o'clock news. That was six yep, o'clock. Yep. Uh, so we probably came in at four thirty or five. Yep. And I remember we did like all the typing the numbers and stuff. But the one thing I do remember thoroughly too is going in the radio studio that was connected at the time on right. that TV station. Um, I don't know what radio was, but I think it was Jay yet or was it somebody else? I think um, it was what's now iHeart. Yes. Yep. So I don't know what station it was, but I remember doing it on the radio. Um, and that kind of what's 
kind of kickstarted not just broadcasting, but I would like to say the radio side of everything, too. I don't know what I thought about the microphones or the mixing or the radio, but it's just something that I, I, I attribute to you getting well, into that. Wow, so, that is so cool. <laughs> so I, wow. had, I had to say that, but um, that kind of kickstarted. I knew I wanted to go into broadcasting pretty much since second grade, which is just mind-blowing. I was the same way. You were. Yeah, and when I was a little kid, I used to play disc jockey in my bedroom. You did? Yeah, I really did. Talking, wow. Talking over intros and stuff like that. And yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm so glad like I got an opportunity in high school to really dive into the DJ side. And radio has changed in the last 15 years, oh, yeah. no doubt yeah, about that. that. Um, but uh, I just had to show you that here, too, that I that T-shirt's still hanging oh, up somewhere so and all cool. that. So I had yep. to say that. Um, but let's dive into your side now, you know, a little bit talking about, you know, how I got in the broadcast and definitely you attributed to that. But I guess let's start with your journey into meteorology, because what inspired you and your interest into weather? Well, when I was a little kid, um, I was always interested in weather. I wanted to be a dish hockey. I had no idea doing weather, but I remember watching the weather guys on TV. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember his first name was Norm. But back then, because remember, I'm, I'm old. You know, I'm, I'm 68 now. Back then, when I was really little, they had like a, a clear map of the United States. And either A, he... Oh, he had he stood behind it and wrote in the numbers backwards. But it I was fascinated in weather back then. I had a little rain gauge and wind gauge and all that kind of stuff in my backyard uh, growing up for, okay. as, for as long as I remember. So I always liked weather, okay. but I really wanted to be a disc jockey. Really? And, and it wasn't until I got a, I was in Anchorage, Alaska, and I had a chance to fill in on the NBC station. Okay. And my first day, so they had a weather service office there. I went to the weather service. Got a briefing, and there I, they printed off a big map because computers didn't do fronts and all that kind of stuff yet. And so I would take, I got my briefing in, and it was like tomorrow. And this was Anchorage, and it was middle of winter sometime. And the forecast was like, you know, sunny and a high of twenty-two mm-hmm. tomorrow, and it snowed four inches. <laughs> and you know, it's a joke, but I remember thinking, my first day, I was wrong. I still got paid. Cool job. <laughs> you know, but I, I was always into to, uh, weather, so then I went back to school. Awesome. So I did the Mississippi State thing, like, uh, I don't know if, where Joe did it. He might have been Mississippi State okay. and Amber. When I did it, it was easier than it is now. I okay. will say that. And, and when I did it, Mississippi State had a kind of a bad reputation because oh. it, it just uh, it wasn't as in-depth. Okay. And uh, like I had open book tests, but you had to do them at the uh, National Weather. You had to have a proctor. So like I did mine at the National Weather Service mm-hmm. office in Phoenix when I moved back there. Okay. But uh, so then I got my AMS seal and then um, planned on moving to North Dakota for three years. I signed a three year contract yeah. and uh, just kind of got lucky you know uh and as weird as it sounds we had a big blizzard like my first month okay and i've been told i was the first meteorologist or weather person to forecast a blizzard a week in advance uh-huh. and what had happened is because of that uh kfyr radio which is huge right yeah. and especially back then i mean they were the station powerful yeah powerful. and uh all day during the blizzards, people were talking about this guy in Minot. Well, KFYR had their own weather people, and they, well, we like our guy. Oh, no, you got to check out this guy in Minot. <laughs> and we, KX, when I arrived, was slightly ahead of KMOT. Okay. Uh, never been behind it, but it was close, all right? And then after that blizzard, our ratings just exploded. And so I started getting raises. Uh, every, I got, you know, a bunch of job offers and everything. Every time I got a job offer, David Wright and gave me a raise to yeah. stay. Yep. So I ended up staying here. But that, that's kind of the route to get to. Okay. The route. Yeah. And how, when did you start up in mine up then? What year? 1997. Because okay. my son was born here. So okay. 97. That. All right. Yeah. So not too long. Well, not too long, but quite a while. You yeah. were, And you were there for how many years 26 now? 26 years yeah. on the air, I think. Okay. Yeah. That's just mind blowing. And it was like coming. You didn't expect North Dakota, but here you are. And you know what? Had, had I 
know now with experience what I knew then, I'm not sure I would have forecasted a blizzard a week out Mm -hmm. because I found out over the years how often you could be wrong. Yes. And that was the first time, right? (laughs) And And I had just started, so... I came in and I looked really good, but I could have looked like the village idiot, too. You know, had the storm gone into Kansas or something, I would have looked like an idiot. Yeah. Uh, So I got lucky. Rolling the dice and you got lucky. I got lucky. (laughs) Yeah. So lots of years of experience in meteorology. Um, What are some of the most memorable weather events that you maybe have encountered or maybe even studied, I guess? Um, Well, the ones I've encountered... That uh, at least here in Minot, uh, there, there's, you know, so many, uh, I would say, severe weather storms, yes. you know, being on the air back then, uh, David Wrighton, the, the general manager and owner of the, of the TV stations, was really into making sure people knew what was coming. And so Jim Olson it was always some that I, somebody I could talk to. I had a great relationship with him. So they let me go on the air whenever I thought it was important. Okay. And so uh, I would say severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, that kind of thing. Uh, the flood, of course. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that's I, I think I walked into Jim Olson's office after we had finished the 10 days straight. I mean, I'm talking about like five minutes after that, just kind of decompressing. And I said, I know, you know, this is it's been awful for everybody. You lost your house. But, you know, this was our World Series, Mm -hmm. you know, because we had the numbers that I saw. We had. 25 million people checked out our our broadcast our our coverage in some form yes yep. uh the first couple of nights you know uh, josh demel called us from yeah. he was watching from moscow yeah you know and that got the black eyed peas here yes you know uh so i would say the 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 flood as bad as it was yep. that was probably the biggest and what was kind of cool is sean sitman was out one day and janet Napol- napolitano i think she yeah. was a U.S. Homeland Security. Yep, yep. She got off the plane and she sees Sean and she goes, we were watching in the Oval Office last night. <laughs> cool. <laughs> the Oval Office. They were watching us in the Oval Office, <laughs> you know, and that was cool. The New York Times did a big story yes. on it. And uh, yep. um, so that was obviously the biggest one of the more embarrassing ones was a night of severe storms and Alicia Huck was having migraines on the air. Oh, no. And so during the breaks and stuff, we're talking about the medicine she needed to take because the lights were really bugging her. And, and she, you couldn't tell from looking at her. She really powered through it. But uh, And uh, Mike Elm walks in and he says, oh, there's uh, somebody in Ryder that says a trailer's uh, moving. And I was just being a smart aleck. And if you're in broadcast like you, you know, yeah, yeah. You have a warped sense of humor. And I said, tell him to move. Well, what I didn't know was my microphone was still on. Oh, no. And so this is all going over the air. And so now the National Weather Service calls our hotline in the studio and tells me to shut up, that the microphone's on. So that was kind of embarrassing. Yes. But I, I, uh, I think every broadcaster has some type of hot mic situation. Yeah. Um, I know it's happened to me, but it's just one of those things you just... Yeah, it, you know, hopefully everybody realizes sometimes it does happen. So yeah, and, and there was one night I, I can still picture this. I was doing severe weather coverage. I've been on like three hours straight. Mm-hmm. It was just a really bad night, and somebody brought me in a coke, so I stepped off camera, chugged the coke. Yeah. Well, it's carbonated. Yeah. So guess what you have to do if you chug a Coke? <laughs> and I'm on, and I don't have any way of telling somebody to turn off the mic for a few seconds. And yes. I had to really burp. Yes. So I just kind of put my hand over like this <laughs> off camera <laughs> and let it rip. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, <laughs> those are definitely memorable. And, yeah, uh, yeah the, I remember the flood coverage along with everybody else in this area that it was uh, one of the things nice to tune in because you knew it was on for 10 days straight, like you said. And um, I know you guys won many awards for your broadcast and your stories and all that. And uh, it was just a crazy time. Almost what? How many years ago? 13 oh, years yeah, almost. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So just kind of mind blowing. Yeah. That. And, and Joe Goldaddy, because we mentioned his name earlier. Yeah. He, he really was the, if you want to call it architect of people getting the word yeah. because he went around set computers like laptops on top of yeah. hotels yeah. and out of pump stations. And then we ran them until the batteries died or, you know, out of power. Yeah. And that's how the word got out but you know we had galen ness and jim olson perry olson you know we had uh sean sitma uh you know they lost their homes and they still broadcast i live up on the hill yeah and i i had no problems you know and i just kind of felt bad yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> you know? Yeah, and I, I remember, too, that, you know, I lived out of town at the time, but um, one of those things that everybody seemed to complain about was always the traffic because the 83 bypass was two lane or one lane at the time or whatever it was. But you have to realize that there's other more important stuff going on, too. But that's what I always, oh, going to work in the morning took three hours or whatever. Do I have time for a quickie here? You're okay. going. So anyway, so uh, there was one day there was a tornado warning in Minot. Okay. Okay. And the schedule was, it was something like this. Like one day I would work three p.m. until 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. and then Joe would take over okay. and then there was another time I'd work 6 a.m. to 3 you know we switched long days mm-hmm. and so this was a day it was like 3 o'clock and I'm home dead asleep mm-hmm. and Broadway's closed right and uh sirens are going off and my wife comes in and wakes me up and so I know I got to get to the station mm-hmm. and so I called mine up police <laughs> and I said is there a road to the south side of town to KX that I don't know about. <laughs> and then I hear, hey, can you give Sherry here an escort? You know, I, you know, they, yes, talking yeah. to whoever's in charge. So I said, I'll be on my motorcycle. They met me at 21st. There's a stoplight there by uh, the airport. Yep, yep. And I got to get behind a cop car. We went almost Four, I, I think it was almost 60 miles an hour down Broadway. You could see the National Guard is like parting the seas. <laughs> and so I got to I got to ride for a, with a police escort through town. We pull in the parking lot and the officer rolls down his windows. He goes, was that fun? And it's like, yes. <laughs> and then you're in your motorcycle yeah. of all things. And then the next day, here's the kicker. The next day. Uh, I, I decide I got to go in. Mm-hmm. So I do the bypass thing, which I go past Oak park or however i got there and i started i realized i mean the the cars are backed up to 83 and it's three o'clock in the afternoon so i had my motorcycle i got on the dirt on the side and i went so slow that i could hardly keep the motorcycle up because i didn't want anybody opening the doors Mm -hmm. didn't want to irritate anybody well there was a sheriff on the road that goes from minot to burlington Mm -hmm. is that fourth or third um it's that back road by the pump well he saw me on the dirt and he goes scream up the up ramp right and he's about 50 yards ahead he's 70 yards ahead of me and you know i've got my helmet on and everything and he gets out of his car and i don't know if your viewers will be able to see this but he goes and he's pointing and he's ticked you know he's really mad so i pull up leave my helmet on because i know that there's a lot of cell phones around even back then and i don't want to be on on the news for for that so i left my cell phone on so give me your license he gets in his car and i hear Schrader, you idiot. <laughs> and so he gets out of the car and goes, where are you from, California? And I go, no. He goes, you know how many people you just irritated? I go, Did you see how slow I was going? I was trying not to. I just got to get to work. And he goes, I know, I know. I go, do you want me to go to the back of the line? He goes, no. And he held up traffic and let me in. But on one day, I get a police escort. Next day, I almost got arrested. <laughs> So you're on both sides of the law. Both sides of that. That, I love that. So that's an interesting story, no doubt. Um, So one thing I always wanted to talk about here now, because this is more recent, because you've just recently retired Mm -hmm. not too long ago. It just seems like you can't stay out of broadcasting because there's something new uh, brewing here on your Facebook and stuff. And and I never saw it coming. (laughs) No, I never. I really never did. I, you know, I got off the air and I mean, I retired April 28th and my plan was to not do anything. I mean, you know, anything related to that. I just wanted to, you know, be myself and everything. And then somehow I started talking with Joe Goldaddy a lot more because he came to my uh, retirement party. Amber couldn't come to the retirement party, but I was talking to her and she sent a video for it. And so we just started talking with each other. And then severe weather came up. So we figured, well, let's do some coverage. I mean, it was it was going to start off really, really small. Yeah. And um, all, and then it just kind of took off. People were watching. It's yeah. like, wow, we could do this. And so it just kind of snowballed into something. And we're not even close to what we've got planned done. Because yeah. the problem is, is I'm not the techie person. Mm-hmm. And it takes me longer to learn how to like set up the equipment Uh i mean you know the programming of the buttons uh joe goldaddy has has been doing a lot of that uh amber is just a uh whiz when it comes to facebook Mm -hmm. and i hated facebook when i was working i did it because i had to yes and that's i'm just that age that i don't that's just me now there's many more there Tom. right and and, (laughs) and now i have to do it so we just started doing it and then um it it just kind of took off uh but i just decided at this point i'm 
I'm going to get a little more serious about it. So then we started buying computers and yeah. equipment, and uh, we uh, we just been brainstorming. I, I would bet between from now until last April, uh, Amber, Joe, and I, if, if we we probably done. 2000 text with each other, you know, phone calls, things like that, building this. So it's not, it's not anything I saw coming. Okay. Uh, we bought a website called Hey, Yep. I saw that. And the thing is, when we were trying to buy that first off was just going to be Hey, Yeah. And when you try to buy the domain, it was $7,000. Somebody bought it back right after, if you want to say I got popular yeah. after the blizzard, yeah. somebody bought that. Right. Was cheap back right? And now they were, and so Earlier this year, it was sold for sale for three thousand dollars. Oh, on sale! But hey, Tom is on, which actually works better. Yes, was five dollars and sixty eight cents. Perfect. <laughs> so we bought that. Right now, it points it to Facebook. Yes, but it's going to be its own web page. Uh, I'm just like in the past week starting to build more graphics yep and it, it's interesting because it's like hey tom is on which is kind of what everybody said hey tom is on right. back in the day and then dot com just flows perfectly right so right <laughs> and, and i've had you know i had my daughter is an architect and she, she made me a logo a nice clean looking logo yeah. uh my son nick who's in oregon he was talking to me here you got to do these short videos this is what people like and everybody's been in my ear but again i never saw this coming yeah it, it it really exploded but i enjoyed enjoy it and ideally I would do most of my work in the morning Mm -hmm. be done by 8 30 and then the rest stays free so I don't and but I told you know Joe and Amber and and everybody that I don't mind working Uh you know uh, but if I'm going to be working a lot I want to make some money yes yes (laughs) you know because I am retired yes Uh, I just recently recently kind of if you want to say hooked up with Hutch Johnson he used to be the chief at KX and B in Bismarck yeah I remember that yeah well he's in Fargo he's He's doing something in the same ballpark that I'm doing. Okay. He's got a little different angle, but he's in the eastern part of the state. I'm in the west. Uh, I've been talking with him. We're just going to kind of help each other out. So, like, when there's a blizzard and and people are going to be traveling, I can put him on via Zoom on my uh, Facebook thing, and we can ask questions. People can ask him about different roads. We're going to do a lot of different things. We've got a lot of things planned. But again, I never saw this much coming. No, and and for what you've done with it so far, because I remember when it said... Tom Schrader, meteorologist, changed his Facebook page name. You get a notification if you like the page. Okay. And I, I don't know if anybody told you that. And I said, hey, Tom is on dot com. I'm like, whoa, what's he doing? And then you just start broadcasting. <laughs> so uh, that that is a story then. It's just like it kind of was a brainstorm between a multiple of you. Part of guys. it was I, I'm very competitive. Yeah. And after the second night, second time I did it, my goal was to have more views in the TV stations okay. just because I'm competitive yeah. not that i have anything against them yeah you know they, they they're good people they you know i that's not but i'm competitive yeah and so like the first night we did one it was like on a saturday yeah. and you know i had a couple hundred people watching yeah the second night uh i had more views with storms this was back in june or july okay july I it think. wasn't really july. active this year it seemed yeah, like think, in this area right so, it, was, it yep. was july i okay. think july 27th okay. even, you know whatever it was <laughs> the second night i was on i had more views than either kfya or kx in, yes, in, in, on their but, Facebooks. Yeah, yep, on the yep. Facebook for their for their on my lives versus yep. their lives. On the third day, I had more than double than both of them combined, and at that point, it's like we've got something here. Yeah. So Amber, Joe, I, we, and you know my wife, and you know talking to my kids and stuff like people are pay, are paying attention. Yeah. Do do this. Yeah. Go, okay. And it and, and it helped, you know. I think your broadcast history of being in this area, so people know you. You've been always a source for several decades here around that. And I I always remember because before the power went out all the time, it was over there broadcast. And then you hear that annoying tone or whatever it is before something you know go on. Right. So so yeah, it's it's just crazy how much it's changed now from going just watching on broadcast TV to everybody going to Facebook Live to now where it is now where everybody can get. Get the weather on their phone if the power's out you got you know cell phone these, coverage yeah. and all that so that that that's a story itself where you really have took your your experience and became to what it is now so a couple things happened with that the, those first three nights because those really were like the launching pad yeah um one i had joe and amber 
Amber from New Orleans and Joe from Minneapolis, they would be analyzing different storms at the same time. And so I had my phone sitting next to me and I'd get a text from Joe says, check out the wind, the velocity in the storm at Stanley, whatever. And then Amber would say, hey, check out the hook out the storm. And and so I'd say, oh, Joe's scanning the storm. And people saw a team working Uh and it's not officially a team. Right. But but they're friends. And so for them, for me, it was a hobby for them. It's a hobby. And uh, and so what we noticed was people were really digging that we had three of us watching out and we were taking our time. We were answering as many questions as we could and went from, you know, very few to. I think it's over 200,000 unique views already, yes, yep. you know, and we figured we would get there, but probably not until next year. Yeah. And that happened in like six weeks. Yeah. It, it, it's just mind blowing how social media is so attention grabbing in some situations. And um, so you're on Facebook Live right now. Are you expanding to anything else or is that kind of in the works? No, no, yeah, that's yeah. in the works. But okay. the thing is what we've decided and and Joe is one of those people that gets it right before he moves on. I mean, uh, and, and so it was like, let's nail this and mm-hmm. get this perfectly right yep. and that includes setting up all my so- all the software and everything uh, so like if I want to show a picture from the storm prediction a chart from the storm prediction center I can push a button instead of going to the web page I mean yep. all that kind of stuff get it right and then we expand I th- because there's money to be made yes. mostly on, on YouTube yes yep. and that's <laughs> what know? I've heard YouTube is kind of that live broadcasting that's still newer right. but it's still one of those where people tune in to watch videos all the time yeah. and and I do yep. too. Yes. And yep. so I think, you know, uh, by next summer, yeah. uh, I think that's one of, at least that's one of my goals. Okay. Uh, but a lot of that's going to depend on whether I'm technically up to speed. <laughs> uh, again, I'm just, uh, people always did it for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so I didn't really always learn it, yes. <laughs> you know? So, but with Joe and, and, and then Amber in my ears, uh, you know, encouraging me. And, uh, there were a couple of times I wanted to, to say something on the air and I told Amber ahead of time and she goes tell you what why don't you sit on that for a while and in a few hours if you still want to do it go for it but if you say that you're going to start something thank you Amber I mean so we call her the VOR the voice of reason yeah Uh, and and Joe and I are both uh, I mean we all get along great Uh, Joe and I both compete the same way okay and he's he knows how to fire me up with this little snide remarks funny little things that kind of okay I'll show you you know so it's it's fun it's fun that's good a a friendly competition it's it's, it's, yeah and I wouldn't call it a a competition between the three of us um, I, I hate to use the word team because Amber actually works for the competition. Yeah. She has a KFYR as her sister station. Yep, yep. So I, I, when I talk to her, you know, I'm talking to her on the phone or chat and it's, it's personal stuff. I mean, yeah. she's she's helping me if I have a Facebook question. She's keeping yeah. me from saying something I shouldn't say for whatever reason, you know. But it, it's not like she's getting on there and competing with KFYR. We want to be very no, careful. It, we don't. It's do a that. hobby for her too. Right, that's the right. thing because I mean, this podcasting has always been a hobby for this kind of that's recently started. But it's not competing when I worked in the radio when it's kind of my own right. thing. When I literally did everything try to get everything ready to roll so and that's what you're doing with all all the equipment and that that kind of gives me gives me another question here how do you stay up to date with the latest programs or equipment or anything because i mean money doesn't grow on trees so well for one thing i, I now have a sponsor yeah and I'm, I'm looking for one more okay. at this point uh the title team which is the mortgage company yep, in town yep. and then they have offices around the state right so they actually just bought me and when i say they bought me the sponsorship money i just bought a macbook air with 24 gigs of ram so i can run the software because i i'm retired i'm driving back and forth to rochester a lot i'm going to oregon for almost three weeks uh this month i'm leaving next tuesday i get on the train next tuesday uh and so 
I've been lucky that some sponsors like this too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but we are going to start when I build a web page, have a seven day forecast. Joe showed me a, a thing yesterday where it's auto plotted. Yeah. I mean, all the numbers already. So just put some, and he already had a nice looking graphic. But so we're going to do all that. Yeah. But we're trying to do one step at a time. Yeah. And Joe was on the phone with me Sunday night, I think it was for an hour and a half because I was messing with a little box like you have over here. It was yeah, called, yeah. called Stream Deck and then OBS, yeah. which is a broadcasting studio, and I kind of messed it up. Yeah. And <laughs> and so, you know, he's going back and fixing everything, trying to phrase things in a way like, you know, you weren't stupid. You were trying things, you know. <laughs> and he's pro- in the back of his head, he's probably going, that idiot. Oh, my. <laughs> you know? So has uh, Joe, Joe Gold, that he has, he talked to you about, like, any of this AI technology, or is he diving into a that? A little. Yep. I, I put out a, uh, I wrote a, when I was trying to get a sponsor, yep. I uh, I wrote uh, something up to turn, uh, in my wording yep. for a sponsor. I was going to turn into the the title team, right? Yep. I sent it to him and Amber just to get their look. And they thought oh, it was pretty good. Well, Joe put it in chat, chat GB, GBT, yeah, yep. and it came back. So much better. It, like it's two crazy. minutes later, yes. he, it's it's in my in, in my email, and that's what we use. But that's what he does. Yep. He works in the Mayo Clinic, he, and I don't know his exact title. Yep. But uh, there was one time while I was at KX and I, I called him because I needed a question about answered about something, and he didn't call back for about a half hour. Yep. And he goes, "Oh, I'm sorry, I had a meeting with my team." And I go, "How many people in your team?" He goes, "Well, I got three thousand working for me." What? I go, how do you do a meeting with 3,000? Oh, you know, on Zoom or whatever. I go, how do you handle 3,000 employees? He goes, well, I hire good people and I let them do their job. I'm here if they need me, but I hired them to, to do a job and I let them do it. Like, wow, how cool is that? Yeah, that is pretty and, legit. You know, but he's he's all over AI and, and there's so many things that uh, uh, I could go on on and on that, that he knows. He probably knows more about computer than Bill Gates. You know, I mean, I, I, I think he could out-program Bill Gates. Yeah, I would I, be I really surprised. Do. And I, I just wanted to throw in a plug here too since you're really trying to advance your live broadcast there's a lot of ai programs that uh, that uh, take clips of like this pro- broadcast and make 10 second quick shorts on it and you can post them up like that it's done in like 30 seconds i think we're going to be talking y- when this y- is over yes yes, yes yeah so <laughs> okay. I, I and it's like there's a lot of subscription based stuff like that but if you can get 10 clips for just hitting the highlights of a broadcast or a podcast uh, that's it's just crazy how much time it reduces besides finding those clips every 10 minutes it takes or something like that you know for that but something uh really put a bug in your ear and probably joe's ear yep. too um he's a, probably I, already he, thought I, of I, it. I wouldn't be surprised man so <laughs> just to give an idea where he's at yeah uh several weeks ago there was a football game the last professional football game new orleans and los angeles okay. they were in los angeles the stadium um is a stadium that they they would cancel things for the NFL could have canceled it. This is when they had that big, huge rainstorm going through. Yep. And so, um, Joe's Amber's working in new Orleans and they had, that's where they're going to do the post game show yep. and all that stuff from new Orleans. And they had an NFL player there and from the saints and stuff. Anyway, there was an earthquake at the same time. Oh, geez. Wow. Joe let Amber know about the earthquake. If I got this correct, I think I do. Joe had some kind of software set up that, that let him know and he was able to get to let amber know about the earthquake eight seconds before like anything else happened and that while that may not sound like much the fact that he had something like that designed yes and it pinged his phone you know and then he was able to alert amber about the earthquake before anything started coming over the wire yeah. and and it was, but just the idea, you know, and like he has one for his uh, uh, and I'll quit bragging on him here. But like for Northern Lights, it, it knows where he lives. Yeah, uh, it'll ping him with the Northern Lights are out, but only if it's not cloudy. Oh, <laughs> that's you know, pretty that, good. That kind of thing. I mean, that's wow. that's just how he thinks. That, and yeah. that, the, wow, just diving in there, yeah, isn't yeah. he? So, well, yeah. So there you go, Joe. You got your plug you got for your sure. Plug. Yes, yes. I, I probably a future interview with Joe coming up. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right. So uh, the one thing about meteorology and being on broadcast television, it involves science and communication. So uh, how do you balance like the technical aspects of that meteorology with effective communication? because you know 
most a lot of people don't know weather terms of size. It's going to rain or something like that. Well, yeah. One of the things that I always tried to do, and I, uh, and in any time I was training a, a weekend weather person or mm-hmm. or Amber whatever, my phrase was, "What's the story of the day?" Okay. And when they say, you know, 20 percent chance of precipitation. No, people don't go, hey, there's precipitation outside. It's rain. It's snow. Use the terms that people know. Yeah. That is. And there were times I would use a big word and then I'd say, OK, for you weather geeks, what this means, you know, I would just make a thing about it. But I always encouraged anybody that worked at KX in the weather department to use language that people use mm-hmm. uh, and try not to get too sciency enough where they know you know you're talking about but not throw out these terms that mean nothing to anybody so pretty much when you saw second grade kyle there trying to do what's the h mean and what's the l mean good weather bad weather. <laughs> that, that's exactly <laughs> yeah, it i mean that's what it was i mean uh, second grader right there i used yeah. to go to a lot of grade schools yeah and that is something i did every single time yep h for good weather the l stands for lousy yeah. just an easy way to remember <laughs> lousy weather there right? you go you know and and so that's that was my whole angle is just be like everybody else yes. if you possibly can yeah, that, that that's the thing, because it's like you're broadcasting to so many people, and now you are, too. It's just like a lot of people know kind of your terms now and everything like right. that. But if they're just tuning in and nobody knows weather besides rain, snow, right. whatever, you right. know, it's just nice to have something that explains, you know, very simple terms, I guess, to what's going on. So awesome job. Yeah. Um, so your perspective of weather and meteorology, have they evolved over the years? And um, has what's what do you think the future holds in this, I guess, this field of work? Well, I, I think the field is in uh, social media based. OK. Uh, the, the future. Um, I got out of TV at the right time, you know, because people are getting their weather from um, social media. Mm -hmm. It might be just a a phone app, a small screen. Uh, It could be a tablet, a laptop, YouTube, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're not watching TV as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, six, you know, I, I just read an article my demo you know old people we grew up well we grew up with tv we still watch tv right yep. my son doesn't even well he owns a tv but he's never watched he hasn't watched a newscast my daughter doesn't watch she's 30 you know they're into social media so that's the future and that's why this i think this is going to work you know what we're doing with hey time is on and you know everything seems to be instant you want to go right now let's go to youtube and watch this video about something how to do something um the only thing i really watch live on tv now is probably sports and that's about right, it right but you can get that on your phone too but it's just something about big screen and sports so <laughs> I, you know, when uh with social media and this is kind of i'll tie this all together here yeah. when next star first took over they had uh, a guy that was in charge of he was like the number two guy at the station okay you know and really nice guy got along with him great but we did not see eye to eye at all mm. Because his first day, we had a weather meeting, and he says, okay, I need you to pull all the small town names off the map. You can have four cities on the map, Minot, Bismarck, Dickinson, Williston. And I said, what about all those small towns? They're going to think that we don't care about them anymore. He goes, nope. They get their information on on their cell phone. Hmm. So we don't want to clutter up the screen, pull everything off. I had to. Yeah. You know, but, he was in charge. Yeah. And so over the months, I would like add one or two. Yeah. And okay, I got away with that, and then find then he, they got rid of him. He quit or got rid. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if he got fired or he quit. I think he quit. Oh, I don't want you to get yeah, in trouble. Yeah, so. yeah, no, no, no. I, but <laughs> he, he's a good guy. I don't want to. I, yeah. you know, yeah, he's a good guy. I, I just didn't want to paint the wrong picture. I think he quit. Yeah. The general manager did get fired okay. and he was his number two so he kind of was a package deal he, oh, he left okay. shortly after that but he really said no yeah. and i said there these people in the small towns they count mm-hmm. you know and that's one of the things over the years I, we were and this would happen once a year for a lot of years and i'm saying once only uh a, a year i would be on uh, doing severe weather coverage and the storm let's say the storm was in palermo yeah and it's a severe storm we would break in well the phones would light up 
because why are you screwing up the programming? And I get it. My yeah. wife yelled at me once because I, I did actually break into the season finale of a show called Touched by an Angel, which was the number one show on season TV. Season or series finale? Se- season finale. Oh, season, time. okay. But anyway, I broke into that and boy, and, and I shouldn't have the way I did it. But that's the, the point is, um, you know, people would call and they would just rip on and then I'd, I'd, I would go on the air and I'd say, hey, listen, you know what? I understand I'm going to make this quick. I understand your frustrations, but you know what? The people live in Palermo or they, they live in Sawyer or Glenburn. They count too. Yeah. Phone stopped. Yeah. But I had to do that every year for like five years. And that, that, yeah. <laughs> and I know like that's probably a little different now because I don't know what shows are really on right. where you can go watch them the next day online. Right. Anyway, and there so. wasn't that back there. You yeah. know, if you had a DVR recorder, you could record it, but yeah. that still wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. But there was one time my son was answering the phone and he, and they're dropping f bombs at him. Oh you know, no! And and so he get, he hangs up. He goes, "You should hear what people are saying about you." And so that's when I would go on and say they count too. And then they I get, didn't get any more complaints for like the rest of the summer. Oh my! You know, but then the next year we went through it again. So, what advice do you have for aspiring meteorologists um, that are you know looking to make a career out of the passion? Because uh, meteorology, in my opinion, right now is is you can go on air and tell the weather, but you need the science to back it too. So, how how do you what do you tell people that are maybe going into a broadcast field or a meteorology broadcast field at this time? That, it's a um, well, tricky one. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's a there's quite a few parts to this. One of the things that helped me was I was in radio yep. for twenty some years. Yep. I was used to being in front of a live microphone. Mm-hmm. Um, being on camera, honestly, there's only a couple of people in the room. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. so it's it's that's really. I mean, you know, you're on. You don't want to screw up because everybody sees it, but it's it's not as bad as you might think. Yeah. Um, I would think if if I wanted to be on TV mm-hmm. as a or something like that, and you're going through college, take a speech class. Yes. You know, I that, took all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a speech class. I think that's as, as big as anything. I have to give a shout out to my speech teacher in college, Nancy Pearson. So, all right, yeah, way so, to go. Yeah, so yeah. I took every single one from her at Minus State. And for me, it's um, tell the story of the day because yeah. I, I watch a lot of beginners that try to make it look like they want to show people they know what they're talking about. Yeah, and they're using along with these big terms, and you know sometimes they're wrong too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and that's not to say I didn't make. Mistakes. Last night on Facebook Live, a new round of data came in, uh, a new forecast model came in, and it went from a whole lot of rain in Williston to very little. Okay. And so this is live. It's like nine o'clock or whatever last night. And this lady you know, asked me about Williston, and I say, wow, it just dropped. I go this and I go, I haven't compared with anything else, but this is a brand new model. It just dropped down to less than half an inch. Well, geez, it may rain an inch and a half there today, you know, so everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the thing is, be authentic, do the best you can and 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 talk like people talk. Yes. Don't use terms people don't use. And I think there's so many opportunities now with the technology where a person that's looking to get into just broadcasting or a communication type field, you can literally put yourself out there broadcasting to anybody in right. a click, with, especially in a click. with social media yes yeah and I, I, that's the thing in social media every year you can either be in the eye or don't want to be but you know at some point in social media just it just gets out there in some way or form so and, and one of the things that helps when you're learning and it's called pol- I, I, the phrase I would use is polishing your voice yeah you've been in radio you sound like you've been in radio <laughs> I, I hear that a lot <laughs> so. well, well, well I mean think when we talk in yeah. front of a microphone we're projecting differently Correct, yeah. you know if, if when these microphones are off we're not talking like this no yeah. no 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 and, and so you got to learn that yep. uh, because if, if you sound scared on the air yep. you're you're breathing hard when there's a thunderstorm you're going to scare the crap out of people mm-hmm. you know you can't do that mm-hmm. and so I, I think just pay attention to your craft and i had a uh one of my mentors in radio his name is john sebastian he has a saying uh good is the enemy of great okay 
So people that settle for good will never be great. Mm. And, and I can't say I was, I always did that to a hundred percent because there were days that I went in and I was just, the phrase was mailing it in. You know, I didn't want to be there. I just, you know, it's life. Life happens. That happens. It It, happens. It happened to me too. Yep. Yep. But I always tried to realize that people were trusting me Mm -hmm. and I never wanted to, uh, you know, to mess with that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like that saying that you said. What was that again? I, I love is, it. Good is the enemy of great. Good is the enemy of great. Yeah. That is a good saying. Yeah. I like and, that and one. And he, he was a tough... Fair. He was tough to work for. Yeah. I had a long career with him. Yep. And I can tell you every Friday morning, I hated about 30 minutes because he would ask me a question. And I felt like I was on trial. Oh, I no. mean, but it, but it was in a good way. It was yeah. it was music research and we were researching music and it'd be like, why is this song testing so bad this time? Yep. And I'm having to come up with an answer, you know, yeah. and so but. You know, I, I, I will tell you right now, I'm probably the luckiest broadcaster in North Dakota no. because I ran into the right people. Yeah. I started in Phoenix. Who gets to do that? Yeah. That's, right. That's pretty good right there. You know, um, because I, I interned mm-hmm. from a college broadcasting class. I interned and then they hired me on. But uh, one day I was having I was having particularly tough time with the program director and I thought I was going to get fired and all that kind of stuff. Um, So I called the station across the street and this guy's name is Steve Casey. And I said, hey, Steve, you know, and I had a different name then. I used the name John Roberts. Right. So anyway, (laughs) and I said, can I send you a tape? Because I'd like to talk to you. He goes, no. And they paused. And I said, oh, he goes, I'm listening to you right now. Come on over. Let's talk when you get off the air. <laughs> and so he hired me on. And and Steve Casey went on to program WLS in Chicago. Yeah. And he was the original music director for MTV oh my. and the original program director for VH1. Now, People that, you know, teenagers now have no idea what MTV was like when it came on the air. That was the thing. Yeah, that was it. Well, he was. So I ran. And then John Sebastian has programmed more number one stations than uh, like any consultant in the country. Mm -hmm. They were my mentors and they got me good jobs. So when I say I'm lucky. I went from Phoenix to Chicago in one step. Yeah. That doesn't happen. And it wasn't because I was extremely talented, but they knew I was a hard worker and I was into the music research and audio research. And that was kind of a thing going on. Uh, And then that got me to Houston. So, I mean, I, and and meeting Andy Bobian and, and these are serious heavyweights, but I learned from all these people. And the thing that stuck out to me the most, and I, made this part of every single training session I ever did, including Taylor Austin, who's on right now. And you know, she doesn't, she's not a weather person. She, she wants to be a reporter like her mom, you know, but I, I convinced her that if you get on camera and you can be in front of a camera without a teleprompter, you're going to be way far ahead. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what I made them do because I, I, I learned this in Chicago, not in Phoenix, but in Chicago, these jocks were at the top of the game. Okay. You know, right? And Chicago at that well, time was number two market. market. Yeah, it's like and we big. were the number one rock station, mm-hmm. and and I mean, it was a huge, huge station. I walked in, and this guy he'd come in every day with a yellow pad, and I go, "Oh, what's all that?" He goes, "That's my show." He sat down and wrote down everything he wanted to do for the entire show, um, and all of them did something to that. Yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. So these are the people at the top of their game. And what did they do? They prepared. Yes. And so every single training session I ever had, I, and I told people, I want you to write it out ahead of time and then try to memorize it. You won't. But what happens is it's forcing you to go through the entire weather cast in your head before you walk out there. Correct. I don't want to see you going out there and thinking on the air. I can tell if you don't know what's coming next. Yeah. You know, be prepared when you go out there. I don't expect you to remember everything, but pre- preparation. And Amber did that. Joe did that. Taylor does that. Yes, Everybody yeah. over the years, I may do it. And I said, you only need to do it for as long as you need to do it. Because mm-hmm. I don't do it anymore. Yeah. But you're going to need to do it. And when you don't need to do it anymore, I don't care. And I, I think that's great advice that I've heard several times from broadcasters, because when I started doing like sports play by play prep is so important to get those names down, to get some stats, to get, you know, a lot of that stuff down. It just makes the broadcast flow better in case something does go wrong, which live stuff usually does. I mean, it's just something like that. So uh, key advice for everybody. Pretty much prep, 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 prep. It's a little easier these days sometimes, though, in a way. But well, good advice there. 
there um, from for you, Tom, or from you for you from you. I okay. should say, yeah. See, I got to get my broadcast now back in the mode <laughs> for that. Um, favorite weather related stories or experiences from a career that maybe left a lasting impression. And we probably talked about the flood, well, the flood, for yeah, sure. But is there something that's just? I, I uh, think. Uh, it's it's I, I think in the totality yep. when i say i ran into the right people i also ran into jim olson okay and when we were when he was interviewing me he flew me up from phoenix and i remember when i got on the plane in phoenix it was like 74 degrees and yeah. when i got off the plane at the airport it was 14 below and i think he parked a couple of his t- wheels up on the curb <laughs> to kind of keep me from getting into the wind to, so i wouldn't turn around and get back on the airplane but Jim and I just hit it off. Good. And I said, you know, what I'm looking for is a job where you tell me what to do. You give me the parameters. I will stay inside them. And you don't ever have to worry about me going outside those lines. But let me figure it out. Yep. And he said, fine. And so, I mean, I would routinely walk back and I show a graphic goes, oh, well, you know, the shadow on this one looks a little weird. Or, you know, you have too many words here. And I but he would always help me. Okay. He, he would never come in and say that was awful. Yeah. And he and if I made him if I had something that I didn't ask him about and it looked pretty squirrely, he'd come in and say, you know, if you would have done this, that would have been a, a better presentation. You're right. Yeah. I mean, he, he couldn't have been a better boss. I, I think if you've seen those things, master class yeah. on inline. Yes, yes. And I have a subscription to that, by the way. <laughs> he could do one on leadership. I really? mean, yeah, because people would walk through walls of fire for him. I mean, he was that kind of guy. Uh, he, he never I think in 26 years, I saw him yell maybe three times. Huh. I, I raised his voice three times. Two of them were at me that I saw uh, that I deserved. Yes. You know, uh, and then I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the line I missed one. Like I walked by and he was, but he just, he, it was a nice, it was a great place to work because he hired you to do a job. He helped you all the time. Yeah. But you, you, you felt comfortable talking to them. Mm-hmm. And generally, when you start talking about news directors and stuff, they're in their office and you got to go make an appointment, not necessarily make an appointment, but it's different. Yep. Jim was, I don't, if I say one of the, one of the team, yeah, he was, he was a team leader. But one, again, when I wrap this all up on this, I ran into, you know, Steve Casey, John Sebastian, Jim Olson. I ran into Joe Goldaddy, who taught me, uh, way back when, how to be precise because he would fret over a pixel yes seriously yeah i i, I believe it i yeah. met him a few, a few times when yeah. he was in my night yeah and, and and i learned and i also learned in when i saw him talking to himself not to interrupt yeah because i don't know if you knew this or not he started working at kx or helping at kx in seventh grade yeah i remember he, um he mentioned that before and then he just kind of started bloom from there yeah yeah, yep. yeah and so uh running into him and and amber the last 11 years because her and i became really close friends and you you know when corporate takes over things aren't always as pleasant <laughs> you know especially when you're used to doing it one way and and i i'll, I'll admit i i have, was big-headed about this because when next star bought kx they had the team come in the corporate team they had the coo and vice some vice presidents and attorneys and one of them said that when they bought kx mc and minot they were already making money, and KXMC and Minot was the highest rated small market CBS station in the country when they bought us. Really? Yeah, that's, and that was under Jim Olson's leadership, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, so they've already told me that, somebody that's been into research and ratings and all that kind of stuff. And then I hear, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. We're going to show you how to do real weather. I'm thinking, wait a minute. We've never lost a rating period in 26 years. You have. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. So I always had that in the back of my mind. And, and so um, and but that didn't happen until corporate. Yeah. And and so that's just corporate life. It, it's it's usually about the dollar. Sometimes yeah. it's usually how can we make this simpler and cheaper in some way or form? And that's that's corporate like you said it just happens but um yeah what it's just kind of weird to hear that it's like you're your number one station doing all this and then it's like we're gonna change everything that's just gotta be like whoa yeah (laughs) Yeah. i I didn't understand i didn't understand it yeah uh 
again, being fortunate or running into the right people, I always worked at big stations. Yeah. And when you work at big stations, the management's different. Correct. Yeah. You know, and and because we would, I, I know I'm going to get torched for this. Oh, are you sure you want to say it? Yeah. Do you want to throw an Amber well, Wheeler in there? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's called the VOR here. Years ago, I'm not saying it's that way now. Years ago, we would get uh, stories back to us uh, about KMOT, mm-hmm. how the managers would like go into the studio during a newscast and scream at why did KX beat you at this? Mm-hmm. That's the difference between being at a good station, the number one station, the station that's not the the tension. So uh, our, working for Jim, we had a just it was great, mm-hmm. you know, that's not to say people didn't get along. Yeah. You know, everybody, the co-workers, it yeah, happens. Co-workers, yeah. it happens. Yep. But overall, I mean, it was just a great place to work. And when you work at stations that aren't, then all of a sudden it's now down to the dollar signs, you know, and, and we're not going to spend money to make money anymore, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I got out at the right time. Yes. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, good, uh, good advice. Good kind of story of entailing encompassing everything from the beginning and how it's changed overall to where it is now to where you are now at social media. And I know we hit on this a little bit, but uh, like you said, you're retired now. You're going to be traveling a little bit more and all that. So you invested in to a laptop and that should help you out with all this broadcasting around kind of yeah, all over um, you think I actually did a weathercast Friday morning from Fargo from Fargo okay yeah in the hotel room nice yeah internet okay <laughs> uh, actually I, no actually I took the laptop and went outside okay yeah 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 uh, and be, uh, the and the thing that was cool there happened to be a severe thunderstorm at the time in Fargo really yeah so did you yeah. cover like the Fargo stuff no, no, no? I nope. was I was doing my nine o'clock forecast on the three on Jay Davis's three radio oh, yep, stations yep, yep. so I was doing that okay but I have all the software on there yeah I could have done anything but it was Fargo and if I was in Bismarck, I would have, and the storm was in Bismarck, I would have done a Facebook Live. So, are you planning on staying kind of locally in this Western North Dakota area with yes. ASOM? Okay. Yeah. That, and that's the, you know, with so much access and so much technology you can do anywhere now practically but right your core is here my the core is here the yep. people that grew up watching me are here yeah not in eastern north dakota yeah i mentioned the name earlier hutch johnson uh he's doing something similar mm-hmm. but he's going to be doing weather kid at, at a sponsor really you know, yeah he's got he's got bigger plans and we've decided that we're not i had lunch with him a couple wednesdays ago yep. and we decided hey let's be cooperate let's help each other out let's not compete with each other mm-hmm. and i mean last night like we had three texts going to him you know oh here i set this up this way because he's trying to set things up he's yep. he's a little behind me on getting the thing set up yep. but he's very techy it won't take long for him to blow by me <laughs> but what i tell him i said you're in a bigger sandbox than i am because yeah. that's fargo yes. Grand forks there's more people yep. there eastern north dakota you know, the and, western minnesota and he'd been there 11 years and people love him yep. and so I don't want to step on his toes. In fact, uh, today in 45 minutes, uh, there's going to be a post about Hutch. Oh. I scheduled it on <laughs> you Facebook. You scheduled a post. Look well, at that. Be, well, because, uh, yeah, and for me, that's big. That is, um, I didn't say that, guys. Yeah, you no, said it. it is. Uh, it's about it, the southern part of the state today could clear out and there could be severe weather. Yep. So I just made a post. I made a graphic right before I got in the car to come here. Yep. You know, if you're running, if you're going east, you might run a severe storm. Hutch Johnson is going to be watching for you. So that's going to pop up at noon. Perfect. Uh, so we, we're going to help each other out. Love it. Love yeah. it. So I, we've encompassed a lot of this, a lot of this interview talking about your career meteorology, your future. I guess my last question is, is do you have anything else to add to kind of encompass for this interview? Because it's been great talking to you, no doubt about that. And it's always fun to show, you know, how I got into broadcasting. And then it it really shows that you're, you're learning still in oh, retirement. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm learning so a lot. Is there anything that you would like to add? I, I think... I would anybody that's interested in media okay. is yep. find somebody you trust, learn what they do, but be yourself. Yeah, because I, I would always tell whether people I don't want you to be me. I want you to be you, you know, be me and talking in normal terms. But I want you to be yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and so be yourself. But if you find somebody that's good at what they do, learn from them mm-hmm. and 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 uh, attach yourself to them. Ask questions, you know. And, and so right now, 
I've got a big learning curve ahead of me with all this because this isn't what I, I had broadcast where we had, there were engineers, there was yes. control room. Yep. Everybody else did the work. Yep. All I did was put on a microphone, yep. you know, and besides the weather stuff, but I didn't have to learn any of that stuff and I didn't. Yep. So now I'm learning from Joe and Amber, you know, and, and, and Hutch to some degree, but not, not as much as Joe and Amber, you know, here's what you need to focus on. Here's how you look at things. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so what I keep going back to is I'm a attaching myself to people that are better than, than me. Mm-hmm. And I honestly believe that Amber Wheeler, and I'm not saying this because I know she's going to hear this, and I'm not saying for this reason, I honestly believe she's the best meteorologist that's ever been on TV in, in North Dakota. Nice. I think she she had a better way of explaining things than me. I can't tell you how many times I would watch her in the morning and use it at night, and I'd say, hey, Amber, I'm going to steal this tonight. You know, and people that didn't see her and saw me and thought I was brilliant. Well, I stole it from Amber. Yeah. You know, and so um, if you find people that know what they're doing, listen to them. Awesome. Great advice there. Thank you, Tom. This has been uh, really fun to really talk to well, you. Thank and you. Dad, Thanks and, for the invite. And, uh, yeah. And I'm glad you like the, the nerd studio. Oh, I, I love it. it. I'm they, jealous. People can't see all the fancy nerds. Well, maybe in the back behind Tom, yeah. but it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Yes. And I, you know, it's one of those things I have to say I'm still learning, but the one thing I would have to say is it's okay to make mistakes like will the video will that video work will that camera work and all that you just live and learn and then when you have a budget you can figure it out and hopefully it works the next time so but good good advice there kyle thank you this has been a lot of fun yeah boy that really flew by yeah i'm looking at the time i'm like i usually schedule these for an hour but sometimes they just go and and it's just fun to hear stories and um tom thank you very much it is much appreciated to come stop by in the new studio Oh, and, I'd love and to help out. Thank you. Well, once again, uh, that's Tom Schrader. And where can they find you again on Facebook? HeyTomazon.com. There you go. So make sure you give that a follow. This is Kyle Dean from the Audio Visual Podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you.